All right, everyone, this is Matt here on the Vinyl Head UK channel. I hope you're all well. And I reckon it's time for another vinyl appreciation video. So, a few weeks back, I went on a bit of a spending spree with the earache store. I found some uh, bargains, I guess you could say, and picked up a few records. I got a Municipal Waste record, I got a Vector record, and I got this record next to me right here. So this band, straight out of the Florida death metal scene, a band that's always kind of not been too far away from controversy, but a band that has continued to put out pretty solid music, especially in the early 90s and then more so in the present day. They had a little bit of a blip, but the best of the bands do. But right here is, as I say, straight out of Florida, Deicide with the stench of redemption. Let me show you that right there. Ape Studio album. This was originally released in 2008, but this is a 2018 reissue put out by Earache. As I say, Earache, um, they had some really good records on the Earache store for not a lot of money. They were sort of going for 10, 12 pounds. So I dived on in there and, and picked some up, which I'm pretty happy about really. This record sounds so good. Um, but yeah, day aside, as I say, one of those um, kind of, I guess, founding members of the Florida death metal scene. Controversial. Um, you know, you only have to look at their lyrics and li uh, song titles to see uh, a couple of those being on here, which we'll come on to. Glenn Benton, of course, vocals and bass. Pretty famous story of his inverted cross burnt into his forehead um he is very much a satanist that is is his religious beliefs uh and yeah you only have to look at the lyrical content to to see the the anti-religious themes that come across in this music so as i say eighth studio album by the band uh and this is kind of a i guess a return to form for the band they had a couple of lineup changes. Um, so the Hoffman brothers, who were there from the get go, had left the band. Um, obviously, they were there from the get go. And we had a couple of new additions. So on this record itself, we have uh, Glenn Benton, who I mentioned on vocals and bass. We had uh, Jack Owen coming in. So anybody that knows their death metal. History and knowledge will know Jack Owen came in from Cannibal Corpse. He was a long-standing guitarist for Cannibal Corpse. He came in. We also had uh, Ralph Santola coming in. Some may know him from Ice Earth. I think he did uh, one album with Ice Earth. He also went on to play for Obituary. Sadly, no longer with, it, with us. We lost him to a heart attack or complications from a heart attack a few years back. Actually quite an interesting choice bringing him in and it's one that a lot of the fans of Deicide and the sort of death metal community kind of frowned upon a little bit. He was a Roman Catholic um, and coming into the band he had quite different religious beliefs to Glenn Benton who, you know, is, practices Satan, Satanism and belief of Satanism, Satanism get my words out, um, so it was an interesting inclusion to bring into Deicide. And then, of course, on drums, Steve Ashheim, who also produced this album. Um, so, yeah, Glenn Benton and Steve Ashheim, founding members of a the band there from about 87, 88, I believe it was. Um, Steve Ashheim, obviously, we know, writes a lot of the material as well. Uh, but the, yeah, this was quite a change in, in sound for the band. The Hoffman Brothers, very much uh, with a band, it was just a lot of fast, typical death metal riffing. There wasn't sort of the melodic edge in that, but with uh, Jack Owen and, and Santola coming in, there was much more sort of melodic leads coming off on the music. There was, I know it's not something we massively associate with, death metal, I know we have melodic death, 
but with death metal itself, we don't always think of melodic passages, and we definitely didn't with Deicide previous record. But if you listen to it, then yeah, there's there's a lot of melody sort of mixed in with the blasting and Glenn Benton's very guttural, deep, famous death vocals. And it makes for an interesting sound. This was definitely the best record that they put out uh, in a in a few records since our early 90s stuff. Um, and it's still one of the, I would say, the better, maybe later day, day aside records. But should we have a look at it? As we always do, let me show you. Um, obviously, I mentioned about lyrical content and song titles and whatnot, but also album artwork. We know that there's a lot of shock value with death metal. You only have to look at the uh, Cannibal Corpse artworks, anything like that. Um, but yeah, Deicide equally have quite controversial uh, album covers. We can see here the cross, skull the bottom. The Deicide logo is kind of blended in a little bit, a little bit tough to see in what I guess is the flames. The sense of redemption over the other side. Again, a little bit tough to see with those flames. It blends in. Uh, and then we have uh, maybe Jesus. Could be. Wouldn't be surprised. Uh, sort of spewing out blood coming through the cross there. Uh, and it's, again, it's that imagery associated with the lyrics, lyrical content. Very typical of Deicide, as we know. The back, we can see, not quite as controversial, really, there. We can see a picture of the band themselves. Uh, we have our track listing down the side. Earache. And again, coming out of the flames there. But, yeah. If you're into controversial imagery, look no further. It's not the most controversial uh, album artwork out there but I'm sure it will ruffle a few feathers of religious folk. Having a little look inside, so we have our inner sleeve. Uh, we have the four of them right there. Uh, thank you list, Deicide logo, who's who, all your typical stuff there. And then if you want to go word for word with Glenn Benton, we've got the lyric sheet on the back on the inner sleeve right there pretty small if you if your eyesight's not so good you might struggle with that one but it's on there and then of course you all know me by now it's going to be black vinyl i'm not one for color vinyl or um you know anything like that it's not for me um and then side a pretty simple day side logo track listing earache all the stuff you would expect to see nothing too out of this world on that right there uh it isn't paper the inner sleeve so you just have to be careful that with the static and you're not scratching the record itself uh when you're pulling it in and out of the inner sleeve there we go let's put that away let's keep it safe good nick this came in um it is new it's not a used record so it is in completely good nick there's a slight dink to one of the corners but i can live with that it's not ripped or it's not in hideous condition it's in real good nick as is a record record plays really well which i'm happy about um we'll go through track list as we always do so side one side a the stench of redemption death to jesus is the second track of course as i say you know is it is very anti-christian and anti-god and jesus uh, desecration, crucified for the innocents, and then finally walk with the devil in dreams you behold. On the second side, homage for Satan, not of this earth, never to be seen again, the Lord's sedition. And then an interesting cover to round off this record, Black Knight by Deep Purple, of course. Very interesting cover i'll come on to that a little bit later but as i've said this has a lot more melodic edge to this record uh the introduction of owen and santola we have melodic leads coming through um i think mainly uh santola is the 
lead guitarist. Jack Owen is more of a, a rhythm guitarist on this one. But you do you definitely have a, a more melodic side coming through compared to just the furious riffing that you'll get on Deicide albums prior to this one, which I like. It's a different edge. I think a lot of the critics were quite happy with this one as well. You read a lot of reviews of this record at the time. And even now people talk about it as being a really solid Deicide record that we've kind of continued on that sort of form with. I think this is definitely one of the stronger ones of the sort of modern Deicide records. Um, you know, maybe not compete with the early 90s stuff. But definitely as we went on through the back end of the 90s into the 2000s, we saw a little bit of a dip from Day Aside. But I'm glad they found themselves back again. Um, it's just everything you'd want from a Day Aside record, really. Like Benton's vocals, just so guttural and so raw. It's like exactly what I want to be hearing from a death metal vocalist. That harshness to them. Um... You know, even the inclusion of Black Knight, it's it's not Black Knight as you've probably ever heard it before. I'm sure there's been 101 covers of that song, but to hear it done by a death metal band, I mean, initially when the song starts, you probably can't pick up that it is Black Knight, but then you hear that -na 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 riff, but played by a death metal band, and you, you suddenly go, okay, this makes sense. I can tell what this is now. You know, you'll never hear Black Knight sound like this by anyone else. So it is quite unique and interesting. I think any Deep Purple Black Knight fans out there will probably want to rip this record up as soon as they hear this cover. But, you know, I appreciate it's not going to be for everyone. Um, the standout tracks for me, Stench of Redemption, Homage, Homage for Satan and Not of This Earth. I love Not of This Earth. I think for me personally, that is the best track. Homage for Satan is a close second. The opening track, you're just straight into it. There's no messing about. Um, there's that sort of, not feel as such, but um, actually I'm on the toms going with that riff. And then we're just like 110 miles an hour straight into the record. And it's like, they mean business. I don't know if the inclusion of the new guitarist, um, especially after the Hoffman brothers leaving, lit a fire in Glenn Benton and Steve Ashheim, but it feels like it very much so. Um, it feels like they have a point to prove. I imagine a lot of people put speculation, can Deicide continue without the Hoffman brothers? Are we going to get the Deicide we want or is it, are they going to sort of sink and not be a shell of their former selves? And I think that fired them up. And I think this is why this record is so strong and maybe stronger than ones released later as well. They needed to prove themselves. They needed to show the world that we can do this. And yeah, with a slightly more melodic sound. As I keep saying, it's still day aside. It's still pummeling fast. Typical death metal riffs and the blasts and... Benton's vocals, but with a slight different undertone to it, but a nice one. You're not going to get them, you know, it's not, they've not turned into a mellow death band. They're not suddenly going to sound like At The Gates or In Flames or Early In Flames, at least. Anyone like that, Dark Tranquility, but there is a difference to the sound. And I like it. I think this is a really, really great record. Um... Funnily enough, I was actually speaking to someone the other day and saying Deicide is a band I really want to see live that I never have. Um, you know, I, they've always seemed to cancel whenever they've been on a lineup or a festival um, that I'm going to see. They've pulled out for whatever reason. Um, it's usually down to Glenn Benton. Um, and I was saying that to someone and then a couple of days later... They sent me a a picture of a UK tour that they're doing in April of next year. So I've got my tickets for that already. I'm praying that they do not cancel. So I'm going to go and check their side out for the first time live. And I'm really excited about that. Um, I think that'll be a great gig. 
Um, so that's not for a while. So, you know, a lot can happen between now and then. But hopefully, fingers crossed, um, and we get a, a couple of tracks or so off this record. I'd be, I'd be pretty happy with that. I'd just be happy to see Deicide, you know. Sound-wise, this record sounds good. It's not the most dynamic. It's uh, not the most digital, but it's not the most analog sounding. Um, sound stage is okay. Dynamics are okay. I wouldn't say they're great. I wouldn't say they're bad. They're okay. Um, you know, I don't think this is an audiophile record, but if you're just happy to stick this record on and do whatever you want to it, sit back and relax and listen or, you know, crash round your room, whatever you want to do, I think you'll be happy. I don't think you'll be hugely disappointed by the sound. As I say, it's not the most digital one, but it's not the most analog sound. So I don't think you will be hugely disappointed. Uh, it plays really well. I'd hope it plays really well because it's it's new. It was still in the uh, shrink wrapping. Um, and yeah, it, it's such a solid record. I played it quite a few times, um, probably more than the other earache stuff that I picked up. Um, it's quite a manageable length. I mean, municipal weight. Of the three that I got, municipal weight is like a half hour record. It's one that you can stick on if you haven't got loads of time you want to listen to it through. This is about 40. The Vector record, which I'll be coming on and talking about soon. I mean, that's pretty lengthy, 70 minutes or so, around about that. Um, but, you know, this is a nice length for a record, around the 40 minute mark. I like records to be kind of that length. We're looking at 20-ish minutes either side, which is right. I mean, it'd be nice to have a little less, but 20 minutes each side on the vinyl. You know, we're not compressing that music down too much. And yeah, I'm happy. You should be happy if you pick this one up too. As I say, Ape Studio album, Day Aside, The Stench of Redemption. For all your satanic themes, look no further than this. All right, well, thank you for checking this one out. Don't forget to subscribe, building the channel up with a few more subscribers. So thank you all very much for that. Hit the like button, hit the bell for all notifications, all your usual malarkey. I'll be back soon with more content. Let's look at more vinyls and various musical stories and interviews. Lots more to come on the channel. And as always, don't forget, go and buy vinyl. Go and listen to vinyl and I'll catch you guys real soon.